Father, we love you. We want to live where you are. Right where you are. Right where you are. Let not one person live here the same. Confirm your love for somebody tonight. Be glorified, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Wave your hands and give him the praise. And you might be sitting. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone here tonight to this wonderful, auspicious service in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Our subject tonight is dividends of the blessing. Part one. Because we are going to have a second part next week, Tuesday. Next week. Our objective is to understand the dividends and the byproducts or the byproducts in bracket of the blessing. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. God speaking to Abraham said, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I'll bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Why are you, why are we going to be seeing the dividends of the blessing? There is something I want us to gently know that every light comes to produce a lift every light arise shine for your light has come every light comes to produce a shift revelation is for revolution You are familiar with the blessing before. But you are about to know some things about the blessing you never knew before. These things that you are about to know is not just for the purpose of knowledge. Knowledge is a combination of two words. It's a combination of know and edge. So everything you know leads to an edge. Whatever you know for the first time or you know afresh gives you new edge. Light comes to fuel faith. Let me say it like this. Revelation comes to refire conviction in order to bring about a realization. So when you get in touch with the revelation of some things about the blessing tonight, it will refire your conviction in order to bring about the realization. 
I am saying this so that we don't come to church all the time, take notes and nothing changes. Having said that, I proceed to say that the blessing of God is an all-encompassing package that is far beyond the acquisition of wealth. It's an all-encompassing package. If the blessing is the product, then there are byproducts. The blessing make it rich, yes. Proverbs 10, 22. But it produces more than just rich. For example, crude oil is a product that has many byproducts. It has PMS, it has DPK, it has all manner of things. Petrol atom, it has several things. Things that you can use to make the road out of one crude oil. Electricity also has many products and many byproducts and many uses. That is how the blessing is. So, what are the dividends of the blessing? What are the yields, the byproducts of the blessing beyond what we saw already on Sunday during the blessing Sunday? If you have done what you need to do or doing what you need to do to secure the blessing of God on your life what are the things you expect to see along with the blessing am I communicating you need to know it so you can enforce it you need to know it so you can make demands on it you need to know it so you can insist on it what are the things that come along with the package of the blessing for example, when we say it's a blessing Sunday and blessings have been declared, what are the things that are to accompany the blessing? Number one, divine wisdom. Divine wisdom. Divine wisdom that is expressed in creative ideas. Solution provision. Problem solving and direction provision. I said, divine wisdom, which is expressed in creative ideas, solution provision, problem solving, and direction giving. Or direction provision are dividends of the blessing. So when we say a man or a woman is blessed, he has been licensed to have access to creative ideas. He is licensed to have access to wisdom that produces solutions solves problems and produces direction am i communicating so you are not permitted to be blessed and exist as a dollar whether you are in ministry or you are in business or you are in industry example abraham manifested divine wisdom by the invention of the ranching system. Genesis chapter 26, verse 15. So that Abraham dug wells that he used to water his animals and they were in the same location. We're not going up and down and um, put the cows under pressure. No. Abraham manifested divine wisdom by the invention of the ranching system second 
Isaac was a creative thinker. Who probably invented the irrigation farming system. In Genesis chapter 24 verse 63. We saw Isaac meditating in the field. And in Genesis chapter 26 verse 22. We saw Isaac at Rehoboth. Where the land was fruitful. By the irrigation system. Genesis 24, 63, he was thinking. Genesis 26, 22, we saw the product of the thought at Rehoboth, where the land was fruitful. He was a major irrigation farmer by productive thinking. Example number three, Jacob. Jacob manifested divine wisdom in Animal husbandry and genetic engineering. He manifested divine wisdom. You know the story in Genesis chapter 30 verse 37. All the way to verse 43. Where Jacob literally changed the outcome of Laban's animals by a spiritual technique. That changed the colors of the animal at his will. That was J Jacob. Number four, Joseph. Joseph manifested divine wisdom. In food science and technology. Where he devised the method. That could preserve perishable food for 14 years. Without modern refrigeration or food preservation technique. Am I communicating? When there was seven years of famine in, e in Egypt. Followed by seven years of plenty. And in Genesis 41, 34. All the way to verse 36. He gave Pharaoh what to do. And that he could preserve food for 14 years. That was food technology. Food science and technology. Preservation technique. Without the refrigerator. Without other preservatives. By divine wisdom. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Example of Job. Job, by the blessing of God, walked in the realm of divine secrets. That exploded its resources. By the wisdom of God. In Job chapter 29 verse 4. He said oh that I was in the days of my youth. When the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. When the almighty was yet with me. When my children were about. Long story made short. When the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. He said the rocks poured him out. Rivers of oil. That was Job. Is God still speaking to someone here? Example number six. David. David by the blessing of God. Behaved himself wisely. Until he could not be destroyed by the javelin of Saul. First Samuel chapter 18. And in verse 14, David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. And the Lord was with him. Someone else describing David. He said that David was a man that had wisdom like the angel of the Lord. Was that Second Samuel chapter 14 verse 20? And my Lord... To fetch about this form of speech has thy servant Joab done this thing. And my Lord is wise. According to the wisdom of an angel of God. To know all things that are done in the earth. Somebody say amen. 
Somebody say louder, amen. Somebody say the loud most, amen. And finally, of course, number seven, Solomon. Solomon possessed such divine wisdom that beat the imagination of the people of his day. And the, and the whole world trafficked in his direction. First Kings chapter 10 verse 4 to 7. The queen of Sheba saw Solomon's wisdom and the house that he built. The meat of his table, the sitting of his servants, the attendance of his ministers, their apparel and their cup bearers and so on and so forth. And there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. How be it I believe not the words until I came and my eyes have seen and half was not told to me. That was Solomon's wisdom. In verse 23 of the same first Kings chapter 10 verse 23. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom which God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present vessels of silver and vessels of gold and garments and armor and spices, horses and mules, a rate year by year. That is wisdom. Somebody say amen. Somebody say louder amen. So whenever you are blessed of God, you connect wisdom. And when you connect wisdom, you step into stardom. Wisdom speaking in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, 14, 15. He said, by me, king's reign. Yes, verse 14 now. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, king's reign and princes decree justice. To be blessed of God is to connect the wisdom of God. And when you connect wisdom, you step into stardom. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1. And the boldness of his countenance shall be changed. You step into stardom. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody say louder amen. You have not been called to die trying to achieve what everybody is trying to do. The reason why there is a shortage of invention, a shortage of innovation, is because everybody is trying to do what everybody is doing. I, I told our structural engineer, and our engineers on this construction, I think they were the evil, even the ones that said it, that every time there is need to give any single award on this construction, that is the engineering people, that the senior pastor also need an award as the master supervising engineer. They are not lying. Because I remember several aspects of the construction here that we brought in constructive and creative impute. Some that was deemed impossible until calculation proved that it was possible. Some not in the books. A master, a major architect in Abuja City here was here a few days ago. And he looked and he said, was this designed by Nigerians? I said, yes. Designed by Nigerians, built by Nigerians. Under the supervision of the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. Some of the uh, regulatory uh, bodies came the first time the construction started. When they came here for the first supervision, they sought for the permission. That is those who come to say, are you doing, doing it right? Is the foundation correct? Is it right? When they came first, they sought for permission to remain here for seven days. 
and learn what was going on. Somebody shout power. That gallery there, the, 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 the one that you see with the big hand there that has that golden brace under it. Each of it is one trailer of cement. It was meant to have pillar from down all the way up. And I told them I don't want to see any pillar anywhere. Inside there, I don't want to see any pillar anywhere. No pillar should block anybody's face. So they went and did the calculation and realized it was possible. It will only consume more cement and more iron rod. Taken here and there for verification by professionals and professor of structural engineering. They say it was possible. Am I communicating at all? So those braces you are seeing were just, are just there. They are just there literally now for decorative purpose. The structure was wired to stand on himself without nothing holding it. We didn't see it anywhere. Don't try to die trying to do what you have seen. Otherwise, the blessing of God is not a blessing. In the business you are doing now, there is something God can show you that will take you above your contemporaries. In the pursuit you are in now, whatever you are doing with your life, there is a wisdom from above that could step you into stardom until people are wondering, where did you learn it from? Where did you see it from? And you said, I saw it from nowhere. So God bless you is not just a greeting. It's a wisdom impartation. <laughs> uh, is God speaking to anybody here at all? I am saying that the, the way God walked with Abraham and walked with Isaac and walked with Jacob and walked with Joseph and walked with Job and all those people and those people did things that marveled their generation that God can walk with you like that and give you ideas and wisdom until you shake your nation and shake your generation and shake your community and there are people like that here that are coming by the wisdom of God in unusual dimension of things. If you're like that, shout the loudest. Amen. Yeah. Help me shake the hands of three people. Tell them, get ready for unusual wisdom from above. Get ready for unusual wisdom from above. Hallelujah. How many of you know that today in the music world, once one type of song comes out, everybody's writing of song revolves around that kind of song. How many of you have noticed it? There are people who borrow people's lyrics. They borrow from many songs and use it to make one song. Have you seen that before? Because people are not ready to connect with originality. So you see one type of song or type of uh, music or type of um, uh, melody or no, no melody type of um, instrumentation raining and you, you thought it was somebody else until you you hear that it's another person not the other one singing or not the other one's song because people are not ready for originality me and him were playing some of our songs tonight and the 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 the, 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 the play on the saxophone is quite different from any some of you know what I'm talking about. The fingering of the sound is quite different from normal. The notes are just so. Huh, I said, "Is that is is this how this thing is?" God is about to do something in somebody's life that is going to be new and unique. That is going to be original. If you are the ones, shout the loudest, Amen. So I 
want this thing to enter you. When he say, bring your tithes into my storehouse and I will pour you out a blessing. It means I want to bamboozle you with wisdom. Ay, 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 ay. I want to open your mind. I want to connect you with creativity. I want to connect you with invention. So I am not just asking you to pay your tithe so you can get some money. I am asking you that when I pour my blessing, it comes with wisdom. Because your expectation determines your experience. If you don't know what to expect, you can't experience what you are meant to expect. So you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water. So my service to God connects me to the blessing. And that blessing means wisdom. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? On this wise shall the priest bless the people. So my priest, when he prophesies upon my life, he doesn't just give me physical things, he gives me some wisdom things, some creative things, some direction things. Is God speaking to somebody here? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God. God will never assume that you know it. Angels are on standby to do what you demand and what you know. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You fail to know the truth, bondage continues. Lord, I believe that I am blessed and by this blessing, I step into a new realm of wisdom. Then he says, angels release inspiration. He knows what he wants. Hallelujah. Supposing you have a servant in your house and the weather is so hot. What you need was to take cold water and you tell your servant, bring hot water. Give me hot water quickly, please. What would the servant do? Will he assume that you mistakenly wanted cold water? He will give you the water you asked. You, you, you might pour it on your body and be roasted. But you wouldn't assume he, you are the one who say hot water. He has to obey what you said, not what he thinks you, are, you want. Somebody say amen. Lift your right and say, I am blessed. And this blessing equals wisdom. Lift your right and say, I am blessed. My mind is blessed. I am wise. I have creative wisdom. I have solution wisdom. I have direction wisdom. From tonight, I can never function with an empty head, with an empty mind. I am blessed. I prophesy to you. After tonight, and from this night, overnight, you are going to encounter wisdom, inspiration, direction that will change everything you do. God's people, church people, kingdom people are meant to, to coordinate the most excellent organizations on earth. Your school, your eatery, your restaurant, whatever you do, by the wisdom of God, is meant to be on top. And it's starting today. <laughs> Take your seat. Papa Yedeko said during the course of the construction of the faith tabernacle, there was a time a big, um, it's like a crane or something, needed to drive like through that uh, goodness gate inside. Everything had been done. The, the beams and everything had, is in place. But they realized that the, the, the machinery is higher, taller now than the beam. It cannot go. But they needed it to go. The only alternative is to break the ground or break the beam so that they can go. And the equipment needs to do something important right there. It must go in. 
So he came and he asked them, what do you want to do? They said, this thing, we have a problem here. This equipment can't go inside. And they say, yes, Lord, what's the wisdom, the wisest thing to do now? Okay. Um, what is the height of this place? What's the height of this equipment? That's the height. What's the height of his tire? They told him the height. Okay. Deflate the tire. Drive it in. Pump it back. <laughs> <laughs> deflate the tire drive it in pump it back do the work come back deflate it again drive it out pump it back and go your way <laughs> nothing was broken nothing was destroyed nothing was damaged it cost nothing the cost of deflating the tire is infinitesimal Compared to the ground that is to be broken or the beam that is to be scattered. It looks simple, but you cannot get it until you receive it. <laughs> it's coming for someone here tonight. Somebody say aloud, amen. I see in a short time that some of the most strategic people, wisest people in our society, in our nation is coming out of the church, coming out of this church, coming out of the body of Christ. Shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat. So, when the blessing is upon you, access to wisdom is cheap. Number two is divine favor divine favor or opportunity divine favor divine opening divine opportunity is a major dividend of the blessing of god psalm 5 verse 12 he said thou lord will bless the righteous with favor will you compass him as with a shield so when they say you are blessed, it means you are favored. Deuter Deuteronomy chapter 33 and in verse 23, and of Naphtali he said, Oh Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. Oh Naphtali, satisfied with favor. Why? Because you are full of the blessing of the Lord. You cannot be blessed and be a victim of rejection. You cannot carry the blessing of God at the same time be a victim of closed doors. Those two things are mutually exclusive. They are diametrically opposed. God can't be blessing you and the devil be closing your doors. No. No. But if you don't know it, the devil can cheat you on your inheritance. Divine favor. Who and who experienced favor? One, Abraham experienced favor by virtue of the blessing of God upon his life. When his wife died, Sarah died, he needed a burial ground. In Genesis 23 verse 10 to 11, Ephron the Hittite, who dwelt in head, said to Abraham in the, in the gate of the city, verse 11, the field I will give you and the cave that is therein I will give you in the presence of the sons of my people, I give it to you. Bury your dead. Abraham was looking for where to bury his wife and here was a man giving him is property a price choice property free of charge but abraham was too blessed to receive such a free gift so he said no give it to me for a price i want to pay for it but the favor was there that was abraham second joseph Joseph experienced divine favor by the blessing of god upon his life divine favor Genesis chapter 39 verse 3 to 4. Genesis 39 3 to 4. And his master saw 
that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he put into his hand. Joseph found favor in verse 21. Joseph, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. He gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. In Acts chapter, Acts chapter 7 verse 10. Acts chapter 7 verse 10. We saw and the Bible speaking said God delivered Joseph out of all his afflictions. And gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Somebody say the loud amen. Somebody say the loudest amen. That is favor. Example number three, David. David experienced divine favor. He experienced divine favor before Saul. By the combination of the blessings of God and the potentials that he had. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 21, we saw how David came to Saul. And stood before him. And Saul loved him greatly. He became his armor bearer. Saul was seeing David for the first time. And he gave him a promotion ahead of everybody. That was with Saul before David came. And in 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 5. We are seeing how David behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people. In the sight of all the people. In the sight of all the people. David was accepted. Also in the sight of Saul's servant. Somebody say favor. Somebody shout it loud and say favor. Somebody shout it loud and shout favor. Say it at the top of your voice. Say favor. That was David. And then finally, Solomon. Solomon experienced divine favor by the blessing of God on his life. He experienced divine favor. In 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 23 all the way to verse 25. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth. For riches and wisdom. Why? All the earth sought to Solomon. To hear his wisdom. Which God has put in his heart. And they brought every man. His present. Vessels of silver. And vessels of gold. And garments. And armor. And spices. And horses. And mules. A rate. Year by year. Somebody may say, oh, they were bringing all those things because Solomon was wise. And as they came to hear Solomon, they brought the things. But I can tell you, they brought it of their own accord. Solomon didn't charge gate fee. Am I communicating? Secondly, it's important to know that it is possible to be wise and still be poor. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 16 talked about wise poor man. <laughs> then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised. And his words are not heard. So, it's possible to be wise and be wisely poor. So, the riches of Solomon was not based on just wisdom alone, but on the blessing of God. And the favor he had was based on the blessing of God. Somebody, amen. Know that favor will do for you what money cannot do. I cannot say that I have reached there yet. I am still on the way going. But I have experienced some favors. I have. One day, me and my wife entered a, a flight, and I think it was free sitting, and all the chairs were filled. The only chair, the only seats available were at the back, to the tail end of the aircraft to sit down. And I was, I was 
laughing, cracking joke with my wife. Say, oh, they gave us the owner's corner of the, of the plane. We are now the owner of the plane. And, they, and we sat at the back there. Right from that back, we paid for the seat available. That is the, the economy seat. Right at that back. Air hostess from the front say, walked all the way to her back and said, excuse me, sir, can you and madam come, please? There is seat for you in the front. That is a business class. We paid for economy and sat in business. I don't know how you feel, but that is not bad. You know that the service in the two places are different. If they are giving the other people donut and uh, agidi and goro or anything. <laughs> oh, oh, <pan> <laughs> <laughs> if that anybody know up here <laughs> you don't know it what do you know have we been to Obola for before? <laughs> Nine mile corner. Opa, opa, opa. <laughs> you know, even if they are giving them that, what they are giving you is different. For paying, for paying a price that is less. We stood at um, Anthony Village between the road from Oshodi going to Bagada side. You know the place? That overhead bridge there. We are standing on the road trying to go to Victoria Island. And a man drove his vehicle, Molina Towers in Ikoi, right? And he drove and stood in front of us. I said, where are you going? We said, we are going to Ikoi. He said, enter. Do you know the distance of where I'm talking about? He took us all the way to Ikoi. I have never met him in my life. I don't know him. And dropped us in front of the tower. We said, how much? He said, it's not for money. What? What do you want? Nothing. I said to him, he did you, and, and I, I told him, where are you going? He said, where, where he picked us from. He was meant to be going to Yanokaja. Opposite direction. He took us in the opposite way. And then came and turned around to go the opposite direction. With a, I won't forget a V-boot Mercedes in 1999. I looked at him and said, your generation can never be poor. Your children will never be stranded. If that is not favor, what do you think it is? We stood here when we came to Abuja Newly. Somebody stopped in front of us. Where are you going? We are going to and so place. He turned the car because he was going this way. He turned the car, went and dropped us. How much? This is not for money. Bye. If I begin to say it, there are too many. There are too many. There are too many. The blessing of God is not just a wish. It's a force. And somebody here shall experience it after tonight. That amen can be better. Everything that is a cause of, of disfavor in your life, a cause of rejection, a cause of empty handedness in your life, tonight that curse is broken. Shout amen like a believer. The wisdom of God is coming upon you tonight and the favor of God is also coming upon you. Shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give the Lord a praise. Take your seat. Oh, Lord. And finally, for tonight, because when I was, the, the message was meant to be one message before. And then one, as I prepared the message, I realized it couldn't be preached in one service. So this is part one. So we have divine wisdom. Number two, divine favor. Did I tell you how I got, I think our second car. We are not, we are not pastors yet. I, 
where, where I was doing private practice, small practice, a private clinic in Jaws. I walked out and there was a car park in the front, frontage of the car. And I walked and I looked at this Volvo at that time. Alloy wheels, five speed. Five, you know, it has um, overdrive. After you finish with your gears, you can press the overdrive, then it's almost one to fly. And I said, I like this car. And they said, the owner came. I said, oh, you like it? And I, I, was, I just like the car. You know how people go and do window shopping? <laughs> you know, there are people who are experts in window shopping. They go and identify the car in advance. Money that hasn't come yet. I like this car. The man said, how much do you have? I said, no, it's not that I have anything. As such. It's just that I like the car. <laughs> he said, whatever you have, bring. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a very, very tough temptation. This is 1994. Yes. 94, 95. I like this car. So how much do you have? Nothing really. I just like the car. Don't worry. When I have money, I'll come back. <laughs> Listen. You, you, you know, I know you will believe it. He said, just say it now. Whatever you have, say it first. I say, I have 1,000. I say the car is more than 1,000. So, so you say, what do I have? So I have 1,000. It's okay, bring. We will talk later. I drove the car off, dropping 1,000. Later on, he told me the full price, which I settled. But I drove off. No, tell me, Senator, you remember. Now, at that time, our salary was 2,400. So I want you to know the impact of 1,000. <laughs> yes. That was the car we flew in to come to Abuja when God, when God sent us to Abuja for ministry. <laughs> we flew from just to Abuja with that car. Somebody say amen. Now, that happened when I was not a pastor. So you cannot say it's because he was a man of God. Huh? He said the garment has been there. I prophesy upon somebody here today. Something is coming upon your life. Favor is coming upon your life. Say amen like a believer. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And the final we are dealing with tonight is divine strength. We have divine wisdom, divine favor, and then divine strength or energy. The blessing of the Lord releases upon a person divine strength, divine energy, or what I would call supernatural kakarakarity. You know how a person is kakraka like an iroko tree? Supernatural what? Kakarakarity. If it's not in the dictionary, you can... Look for space and add it. <laughs> Psalm 29 verse 11. The strength is a twin of the blessing. He said the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Listen to me. You are not, you are not permitted to have the blessing. 
and be a weakling, a weakling, a weakling mentally, a weakling physically, a weakling in any realm. You are not permitted to. Struggling to wake up from the bed in the morning, you are not permitted to. Let's look at the life of the man called, the, 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 in fact, the father of the blessing. His name was Abraham. And that is our first example. Abraham experienced supernatural strength and vitality by virtue of the blessing. First, he went to battle himself at the age of almost 100. In Genesis chapter 14 verse 14. Abraham commanded a troop. When Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants born in his own house. 318. Is that a company? 300. Or a battalion? It's a company. Reinforced company. That is what it is in the military palace. Himself leading the battle at the age of almost 100. If you read down the Bible, say he divided himself against the army of four nations. And this man that was almost 100 years old beat them physically and rescued everything that the enemy took, brought it back physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the age of almost a hundred years, Isaac was not born then. How old are you that you are behaving so tired? How old are you now? Papa Yeriko told me a funny story of a man. Every time he wants to, he wants to emphasize something, he said, do you mean I can tell a lie at this my age? At this my age? He was only around 20 something. <laughs> do you know when he became around 40, he looked like 80? Because age was too important. At this my age? You know, the importance of age most times it's majorly in the village. That's what they call it, village, villa of age. Abraham, almost 100 years old, was still in the field, was still forceful, was still audacious. I can tell you if Jesus starts to come by the time we are 18, 90, if Jesus starts to come, this energy will remain by his message. By next month, we are married for 25 years. It's not that we are 25 years old. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Let me give you a second point that you will know how strong Abraham was. In Genesis chapter 22, God spoke to Abraham to take his son, his only son Isaac for his sacrifice. Abraham took that child, that boy. And Isaac was about 17 years old, so Abraham was around 117 years old. Abraham trekked mountainous areas for three days. A man of almost 120. Allah, 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 Allah. By the time he arrived, the Bible said on the third day, on the third day, Abraham saw the place afar. And he told his men to wait for him. If you are reading Genesis chapter 22, you read from verse 1 all the way to verse 6, 7. He saw the place afar off. He told them to wait for him. Verse 3 to 6 and then verse 9. Abraham single-handedly prepared the altar, tied the hand of his son, hand and foot, carried him from the ground, laid him on the altar. 
carried the knife. Is it easy? You'll understand when you go to the village. Until God said, stop it there. Stop it there. Don't kill the boy. What an energy. At the age of almost 120. Now you know the one that touches me the most. Abraham remarried after Sarah died. <laughs> Sarah died at the age of 127 years. According to Genesis chapter 23 verse 1 to 2. Sarah died at age 127. Abraham was 10 years older than Sarah. So Abraham would have been 137. That is almost 140. At the age of 140, somebody should be thinking of the grave now. Abraham, what do you want to marry to do? <laughs> What you want to marry to do? To be observing the woman? Because at your age, no man is permitted to have any form of energy. For where? He gave birth to six boys after. <laughs> Abraham was not to marry for observation. I can never recover from that. Abraham, what are you looking for? At the age of 140, in Genesis 25, verse 1 to 2, look at what the Bible said. Genesis 25, 1 to 2. Then again, Abraham took a wife and her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimran, Jokshan, Midan, Midian, Ishbak, Shua, Hey. Abraham, did you visit a physician that gave you any form of drug to assist you, your potency? For where? Abraham was too blessed to be weak and he manifested his strength in diverse manners. <laughs> I announce to everybody here today, every trace of weakness in your body dies right now. Every man they called impotent, today that potency challenge is over forever. Every weakness in your heart, every weakness in your body, every weakness in any realm of your life, today it is over forever. So shall it be. I saw Prof laughing a lot. Professor of internal medicine. And he's laughing at my analogy of the strength of Abraham. Hallelujah. Please take your seat, people. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Say the blessing is more than money. The blessing is more than resources. Say inside the blessing. There is wisdom. Inside the blessing, there is wisdom. Inside the blessing, there is favor. Inside the blessing, there is strength. There is energy. Inside the blessing, somebody shout the Lord and say, Amen. If I stopped at Abraham, I have spoken too much. But let me give you Isaac and Jacob. Isaac, one man, was bigger than the whole country by the strength of the blessing. In Genesis chapter 26 and in verse 16, the Bible said, Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. One man was bigger than a whole country by the blessing of the Lord. Thou art much mightier than we. All right. I failed to tell you that I, Abraham's strength was on until age 175. Please note that down. 
Genesis 25, verse 7 to 8. Abraham lasted till he was at the age of 175 years old in strength by the blessing before he left. Then Isaac experienced divine strength. He was mightier than the Philistines. Also, Isaac wearied out the enemy. Genesis 26, 19 to 22. Every time Isaac dug a well, the Philistines would confront him. And he confronted and resisted them until he wearied them unto tiredness. He, went, he, he reached Rehoboth by virtue of strength. And Isaac also died in strength at the age of 180 years. Genesis chapter 35 verse 28 to 29. He died in strength at the age of 180. And Isaac and the days of Isaac were a hundred and four score years. And Isaac gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Finally, Jacob. Jacob also experienced divine strength and vitality by virtue of the blessing of God. Divine strength and vitality. By virtue of the blessing of God. In Genesis 31, 38 to 41, we saw how Jacob labored extraordinarily in the house of Laban. He said, I have been with you for 20 years. Thy ewes and thy she goats have not cast their young. The rams of your flock I have not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto you. I bear the loss of it. Of my hand you required it, whether it was stolen by day or stolen by night. He said, in the, in the day the drought consumed me in the, and the frost by night. My sleep departed from my eyes. So he was a man that was restlessly energetic by the blessing. Do you, do you remember that Jacob wrestled with God? Which kind of power be that? Genesis 32 verse 24 to 28. He wrestled with the angel from heaven. Huh? And he was left alone and there wrestled with him a man until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except you bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with man and has prevailed. He said, even you have been able to withstand God, what can you not withstand? Hallelujah. What I have just spoken now is enough to walk somebody out of sickness. Do you understand what I'm saying? The things you have just heard now is enough to make you walk out on weakness. Walk out on weakness. Walk out on weakness. Walk out on tiredness. Walk out on weariness. Walk out on, on everything that is not, that is tying you down. You are a young man, a young woman, and the devil wants you to behave like an old woman, an old man. And you say, no, I am too blessed to be tied down like that. Somebody's heart is about to begin to pump better and stronger and faster. Somebody's energy is about to return. Somebody's nerves and somebody's muscles are about to receive fresh fire and power. You believe that? Shout the Lord and say amen. Take your seat. Listen. Electric current is transmitted through electric cables. Divine power is transmitted through word cables. That is why God sent his word and the word heals and the word delivers. That is why you sit in church and things happen to you without anybody touching you. Because while the word is coming, current is passing. Current is passing. Energy is passing. Something just disappeared from your life just now. 
Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody said to me one day, say, rest. Oh, you walk so much. You walk so much. Do you rest at all? I said, yes. I used to rest in the night. He said, ah, what kind of rest? In the night, everybody sleeps now. But you should try your best. And <laughs> night rest. Night rest means maybe sleep around 3 a.m. Or 4 a.m. And then set alarm clock to wake up at a certain time. And then you woke up before the alarm clock. <laughs> One day my wife said, please rest a little. I try and take a little. I said, so after I laid down for a while, I stood up. You say, are you not resting again? I say, you need to need rest before you rest. <laughs> you should be in need of rest. Okay, if you are not in need of rest, should you rest? <laughs> You have to be tired to rest. That, that energy is coming upon you. <laughs> Why you need it is because it takes energy to fulfill destiny. You cannot be weak and do exploits. The people that know their God, they shall be strong. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. You need to be strong. You need your energy. You need energy to reason sharply. You need energy to move sharply. You need energy for mental efficiency. You need energy. Hypoglycemic coma means that somebody is lacking glucose in his blood. And because he's lacking glucose in his blood, he's lacking energy in his life, and then he just goes into unconsciousness at the frequency of energy lack. His brain lacked energy supply, so he became unconscious. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? And as it is in the physical, so it is in all realms. If your life is lacking in energy, your destiny will be unconscious. There are many people whose destinies are in coma. They come at us destiny. Because they, they drag their feet to do everything. Drag their feet to stand up, wake up tired, sleep tired. Today, that is the end of such an affliction. Say a louder, amen. Shout the loud most, amen. By this time tomorrow, Somebody will have a testimony of divine wisdom. Somebody will have a testimony of divine favor. Somebody will have a testimony of divine strength. You are that one shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I began by saying some things that light brings lift and brings shift. I don't want you to hear what you are hearing just for hearing purpose. I want you to insist. By Sunday, we'll be looking at the way of the blessing. If I want to be blessed, what are the things I will do? And by the time you follow that way of the blessing, it means you are following the way of wisdom. You are following the way of favor. You are following the way of strength. And other things that we shall be mentioning in the part two of this dividends of the blessing. What we have not said yet is heavier than what we have said. And I want you to be in all these services. In conclusion, let me say four thi five things and then give you two counsels. Number one, the blessing of God will do for the blessed what nothing in the physical can do. The blessing of God will do for the blessed what nothing in the physical can do. That is the first thing I want you to know. Nothing. And I, I, I will enumerate that at the end. Number two. The blessing of God is superior to financial provision. It is superior to I have money. The blessing is superior. Because it will do what money can do. It's superior to financial provision. Thirdly. The blessing of God is superior to human connection. 
that I know, I know this person power, this person authority. It makes no sense. By the blessing of God, this place was built in the time of a most dangerous recession in this country. It's superior to human connection. And thirdly, the blessing of God is superior to educational qualification. And don't misunderstand me. Education is good. I went to school. You have a friend, you know somebody, it's all right. You have money, very good. But the blessing is superior. And so I summarize all these points. I say the blessing of God will do for the blessed what nothing in the physical could do. The blessing of God is superior to financial provision. The blessing of God is superior to human connection. The blessing of God is superior to, to educational qualification. The summary of all in number five, the blessing of God will do what neither man, money, nor mastery will do or can do. The blessing of God will do what neither man, money, or mastery or expertise can do. You are an expert lawyer, expert engineer, expert accountant. The blessing of God will do for you. What need a money? Man, money, mastery will do. What is my counsel? Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Counsel number one. Don't struggle for things. Struggle for God. Stop struggling for connections. Stop struggling just for money or name or fame. Stop struggling for things. Struggle for God. And the second is connected to the first. When you get at the blesser, you get at the blessing. You don't need to ask for the blessing separate if you have the blesser. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6 33. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. When you get at the blesser, you have gotten at the blessing. And I welcome you tonight to this dimension of the blessing. Everything we have mentioned tonight regarding the blessing shall be experienced by your life. Can I hear a louder amen?